appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Hey, dude, uh, are you the one who does the bookings for this place? Yeah, I booked this place. I tried to rent this house for this exact period of time, but my request was denied. Can you tell me why that is? I don't know. A lot of people try to rent this place. I don't remember your request. It's just a little strange because my request was denied, but then Charlie, a white man, put in an identical request an hour later and his was accepted. We barely know I have to get into this right now. Mina Girl, you are white. This movie tried so hard to be woke, but they chose the whitest actress they could find to be this woke, and that makes no sense to me. I think it's a little laughable. Because if, if you didn't even know what this chick's name was, you would just assume she was some hipster white chick. Yet she's screaming racism. Ugh. Hello, this is Wanker Reviews, and today I'll be doing a video on the rental about a group of friends who rent out a vacation home for the weekend. Soon after, secrets come to light and one of them discovers a hidden camera. The only thing I knew about this movie was that it was supposed to be a thriller, I had forgotten about the hidden camera aspect, so it was a treat to just see everything play out. The characters were very interesting and just seeing them talk and hang out and getting a feel for who they were was enjoyable. With other films, the writing is so bland that I'm just waiting for the scary part to start. Sometimes the antagonist is the highlight while the victims are two-dimensional, but in this case I think the opposite is true. The first 40 minutes were really freaking awesome, and there wasn't even any horror going on. It was just the four leads spending time together, and maybe there's some cheating going on, or a history of cheating, a little bit of drug use. And later on, the horror element is deeply surrounded by the relationship between the four leads. It's one of those situations where one bad decision leads to a series of terrible decisions. And I was really sucked into this for the first 50 minutes in. And then it started to remind me of 13 cameras or vacancy. And I just saw vacancy a few months ago, so it's still fresh in my mind. And then when I realized that that was what the movie was going for, I was a little disappointed. Like, oh, okay, this is where the movie's heading. It was just a letdown. And vacancy was a good movie, but I didn't want to see another version of that. I wanted something new. I mean, the, like there was all these great characters and twists and turns, all for it to just lead up to this. The antagonist was very basic in my opinion, didn't have any style to him. He was a cardboard cutout of any generic villain from any slasher movie you've seen. Although even having said that, I do have to say that there were a few jump out scenes that really got me. Even though he was basic, because of the decent writing, they utilized him in an unconventional way that made him creepy. Like it was spooky when you barely saw him and he would come out of nowhere. I just wish they had given him his own signature. I just wanted this to feel more balanced. Cause you do have like four strong leads dealing with all this crap from the antagonist, which works. But once you actually see the antagonist, he's uninspiring. Overall, I do give this a 6.5 out of 10. It's definitely worth checking out. 